Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. Alright folks, in this Tips and Tricks episode, I'm going to break down the rigging up of how to go slow pitch jigging into its most basic elements. We're going to go over how to attach your leader to your line, what terminal tackle you need to hook up your jig, and finally, we're going to go over how to rig up and assemble a jig. That's right, we're going over how to rig up to get ready to go slow pitch jigging. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright folks, so like I said, we're rigging up to go slow pitch jigging. A key element to rigging up for slow pitch jigging is the split ring pliers. They look like this. They have this little tooth. It opens up split rings, which are basically little tiny versions of key rings. You're going to want to learn how to use these, get comfortable with them, and become proficient at using them. That way, when you want to switch up jigs or re-rig, it's not a time-consuming process. This is a slow pitch jigging setup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my gear real quick, and then we'll start getting into what you need to rig up properly to get you underway. This setup consists of the reel, which is an accurate Boss Fury 600N, 600 Nera. The rod I have it on is a 68 inch star rod from the Plasma 2 series. Slow pitch jigging rods are not rated the same as standard spinning rods or conventional rods where they are rated for the pound class mono or braid that you're going to use. Slow pitch jigging rods are rated for the weight of the jig you are going to be using. So, this particular rod that I have is rated for 150 to 400 gram jigs. It's a fairly wide range. It covers the areas where I know I'm going to be fishing most often. The guides on this rod are what is known as acid rack or spiral rack. What they do is they start out on top and they end up on bottom. And the theory behind that is, is so it keeps your main line, your braid, from ever touching the blank of the rod. Okay, so first and foremost, to do slow pitch jigging, you're going to need braid. If you don't have braid on your reel, you're not going to be able to jig properly. Monofilament stretches and gives and does not put the proper reaction on a jig when it is under the pressure and the weight of water and you're pulling against it. Braid does not give which is why it makes a jig react properly. After that, you're gonna need a shock cord. What a shock cord is, is it is some monofilament, not too much, max 15, 20 feet, especially for slow pitch jigging. What this does is when the fish strikes, it gives it a little bit of stretch, like a rubber band, and it allows those hooks to really set in and grab the fish and get you into the hookup. So you have your choice for your leader. You can always use just regular monofilament or you can use fluorocarbon. I personally go with fluorocarbon, 40 pound fluorocarbon. My main line that I have on my setup is 30 pound braid. This is a bigger reel for slow pitch jigging, but I've had it for many years. It's packed with 900 yards of 30 pound braid. That's right, 2,700 feet of 30 pound braid. I can go way out fishing real deep and not ever worry about having enough line should I get hooked into a big fish. All right, so before we get into the rigging up, I want to generally go over what your rig is going to be. You've got your braid, your braid is hooked onto your leader. We're going to use an Alberto knot to thread our braid onto our leader. Alberto knot is a great Chinese finger trap constrictive type knot that lets the braid grip that leader and it won't let go. It's great because you're not really tying overhand knots or making abrasion points in your leader. At the end of your leader is a simple solid ring. This is an 80 pound ring. Now what's going to happen is, is you'll have your jig rigged up and you're going to fasten it to this solid ring. I like to keep my jigs always fully rigged up with two sets of double hooks no matter what. What you have at either end of your jig are two split rings that hold on the sets of hooks. So what you'll end up doing is you are going to open up that split ring and you will fasten it to this solid ring. 
And when all is said and done, you end up with an application like this and you're rigged up. All right, so we're gonna get into this. The first thing we're gonna go over is how to thread your braid onto your leader with the Alberto knot. And then we're gonna fasten on the solid ring to the end of our leader. So here we go. To do this properly, you're gonna need a couple of things. I use about 15 feet of 40 pound fluorocarbon. An 80 pound solid ring. A cutting tool a sharp knife and we'll need our main line which is our 30 pound braid the first thing we're going to do is you take your fluorocarbon leader and you make a loop and you pinch the end of it the next thing you do is you take your main line of your braid and you pull it through that loop and you get about six to eight inches of it. The next thing we're going to do is we have sent it from the front to the back of our loop. So we will stay, we will bring our braid around the front side and we're going to wrap it up over both lines, the tag and the main line of our leader we're going to wrap it around there six to eight times. So this is what you have. You have your braid wrapped on here. So as you can see, we're threading the braid onto the fluorocarbon. Now we're going to wrap back down the other way, wrapping around and in between the wraps that we just made, going back towards our loop. You only have to wrap, you want to wrap about the same amount of times, keeping your wraps in between so it almost makes a cross hatch pattern. If you don't get it perfect, don't worry. Braid acts like a Chinese finger trap in this application. So, all right. Now, we are at this point. We have wrapped up and we have wrapped back. This is what we're looking at. So, you want to make one more time where you send your tag. You want it to come out the same side as you sent your line in. So we will go from the back through the front and then we're good. Now, we're simply going to pull down on our leader in both directions and tighten it up. You can pull on your tag end of your braid. And there is a streamlined finished Alberto knot. You can barely see it. It's made really to flow seamlessly through the guides of the traditional acid wrapped slow pitch rod. However, I find it very effective with any application of braid to leader because of this knot here acts. All it does is cinch tighter and tighter and tighter. And as you can see, there's no loops, nothing. And this is not coming undone, no matter how hard I pull on it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim up our tag end Of our floor. And then we will use our knife to trim up the tag end of the braid. You want a sharp knife, that way you can do it in one seamless cut. There's our tag end. And here is our Alberto knot. 
no matter how hard we pull, that's not coming undone. Now the next step is to fasten our solid ring onto the end of our fluorocarbon. So, so you feed it out, you find the end of your fluoro, and you take it, you pass it through, and I fasten this with a basic clinch knot. I will grab my cutting tool and grab onto the ring. Pull that tight. I will trim off the tag. And there you have it. So this is all you have that is coming from your line it is your leader with a solid ring. Okay, so that was how you thread your braid onto your leader using the Alberto knot. It's a great knot, it's super strong. And because of the constrictive factor of the knot and the non-forgiveness of the braid, it is a go-to knot for jigging. Also, it's a streamlined knot which flows seamlessly through what tend to be tiny sized guides on slow jigging rods. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go over how to assemble a slow pitch jig. When you buy slow jigs from the store, they don't come like this. They usually come with just the jig, and you have to buy the hooks separately. Now, typically the hooks will come with the split rings, although they might not be already on them. So we're gonna go over this piece by piece how to put this together and then I'm going to show you how to hook it on to the solid ring that's at the end of your leader. All right in order to rig a slow pitch jig properly you're going to need a few things. You're going to need your selected slow pitch jig. Two split rings. These are 100 pound class split rings. A pair of split ring pliers. Two sets of slow pitch hooks. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put the split rings on our lure. The first thing we do is we take the split ring and we open one end of it with the split ring pliers. Now we are going to take it and we are going to fasten it onto the lure. Once you feel it bite onto your lure, you just sort of wind it on the same fashion as you would a keychain. Now we are going to install the other split ring on the other end of the lure. All right, now we have split rings on both ends of the lure. Now we are going to fasten the hooks onto the split rings that we have attached to the lure. So it's the same process. You find the open end of the split ring, you pinch it open with your pliers, and you take the solid ring of the hook and you insert it. And then just like you're putting a key on a key ring, you spin the split ring around until it is completely fastened to the hook. Now that side is done. Now we'll do the other side. And there you have it. Now your lure has hooks on both ends you are ready to fasten it to our rod. The next step of the process is to take our lure that we have rigged up and we're going to use the top side split ring to hook to the solid ring of our leader. 
we find the open end of the split ring, pinch it open, take our solid ring, And now your lure is fastened to your reel. You're ready. Dip it in the water, get that line all wet, and go to town and catch you some fish. All right, so that is how you build a slow pitch jig, hook it onto your solid ring of your leader. Now you're ready to get out there and do some slow jigging. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little bit about how to rig up to get ready and go slow pitch jigging. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.